Madam Recording Secretary, good evening, folks. Welcome to the regularly scheduled uh, uh, meeting for uh, November 11th, 2017, or 2020. <laughs> I try to go back in time. God, I wish, right? Good job, good uh, job. Right, thank you. I'm, I'm here doing, doing doing the Lord's work for you, Paul. Uh, regularly thank scheduled uh, Rochester Downtown Development Authority meeting. Uh, Madam Recording Secretary, the roll, please. Marilyn Trent. Yes. Yeah. Bob Bloomingdale. Here. Paul Haig. Here. Chris Johnson, Tony LaPuma, Here. Lisa Germani Williams, Candace Van Slembrook, Here. Eric Diana, Here. Tanya Karsten, Here. Mayor Bixen, Here. Chairman Gio Vanelli, Here. Ann Peterson, Here. Don Sinkowitz, Here. Christy Turvaro, Here. Excellent. The gang's all here. Good evening, folks. Thank you for uh, joining us this um, evening. Or the weather has changed. Uh, we were just talking before we got online about how pleasant the weather's been and how busy La Pumas has been. But I just took the dog for a walk right before this, and uh, it's uh, time to put the woolies back on. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I wanted to welcome Tanya to the board. Welcome, Tanya. We don't have a Hi. full house this evening. We're missing Chris Johnson from Meeting House. We're missing Bob Bloomingdale, and we're missing Lisa Germani Williams. So those three are not here. So next meeting, um, I will make sure that they take a moment and introduce themselves to you. But uh, we're, we'll, we'll flip the table tables on you. Uh, we will introduce ourselves to you first, and you can tell us a little bit about you second. So let's just take about a minute each, and uh, I guess we'll start with uh, the mayor if he's uh, so inclined. Yes, well, uh, Tanya and I, we, uh, we actually had lunch before the COVID shutdown because she won a won or lost a uh, lunch with the mayor. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. So, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, but I want to say welcome to her. Um, I'm mayor. I've been on the council a long time. I've been on most boards and commissions at one time or another. So uh, I'm... Uh, well experienced, I think. You're most definitely true. Yes. Uh, so in, in the DDA, the uh, mayor has an automatic spot. He's part of the executive committee. And um, by that, by default, he's a voting member uh, of the DDA. So uh, Marilyn Trent, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> it's one of my things, I forget to unmute. Um, yes, Tanya knows me from the chamber and I've eaten at a restaurant multiple times. So I'm still Marilyn Trent from Trent Creative. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. changed. Got it. Okay, very good. I just don't know who knows who. So I'm just trying I to- I know, I think it was good. I just didn't want to waste time. Anybody, you guys all yeah, know no, me. It's so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so no. I think it's perfect what you're doing, but I just saved you about three minutes. Excellent, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Tony Lapua. Hi, Tanya. Tony LaPuma. I own LaPumas in town, and mm -hmm. uh, I've been on the DDA four years. I love it. I'm on the site committee. You'll enjoy this. It's a lot of fun. Nice group of people. Great. Thank you. You're here. Welcome. Uh, so nice Candace, to meet you. For sure. Uh, Candace Van Slumbrock. Hi, I'm Candace. I've been on the board for just about a year now. I'm a licensed realtor in the state of Michigan and work at Max Brook Real Estate One. I enjoy working on this board. It is a great group of people. I second that as well and uh, look forward to welcoming you into the board and taking on all the endeavors that we get to take on. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And I think Candace is our liaison to the principal shopping district as well. Is that true? Yes. That is true. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't Thank you. Quiz. No, yeah, no worries. That's great. Uh, Paul Haig. Hi, Tanya. I'm Paul Haig. I own Haig Jewelers, and um, <clears throat> I'm on the Business Development Committee, the head of that, and I've been on the DDA for too many years. Uh, no, I enjoyed being very much on the DDA, okay? I have enjoyed every year I've been on it, and I will enjoy it in the future, and uh, you'll have a great time. Like Marilyn said, we're a good, very good group. Very good. You're here. Well said. Uh, Eric, Diana. Welcome, uh, new bud. I've been on the I've been on the board for three weeks, so uh, it's yeah. nice not to be the newest person. Um, <laughs> I live in a in an awesome sub. 
Um, you know, we have uh, some fun neighbors uh, and I work for Enterprise Fleet Management, which is a division of Enterprise Holdings, which owns Enterprise Rent-A-Car, which everybody pretty much, uh, you know, talks to me about the rental experiences. So very happy to have you on board and, and welcome. I'm glad I'm not the newbie anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Ann Peterson. Hi, good evening and welcome. Um, I'm uh, one of seven council people here in the city of Rochester. I'm the liaison for the DDA and I've been in Rochester 35 years and I own my own real estate company in Rochester. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Ann and Don Sequence, who is going to introduce himself in just a moment, are our liaisons. Uh, they are non-voting members of the DDA, but they are um, an interface back and forth between uh, the different boards and commissions to make sure we've got a, a, a very linear path of information between the boards and commissions. So, uh, Don. Uh, good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Don Sinkowitz, and I'm the uh, liaison for the Rochester Historical uh, Commission and also the liaison for the Rochester Heritage Day uh, right. Festival. I live uh, probably about 10 houses up the road from uh, your restaurant. My wife and my daughter and my granddaughter uh, enjoy coming there for uh, some quick, quick eats and some uh, coffee and things. So again, welcome. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> and then, so Susan McCullough, Susan is our recording secretary. Susan, if you could take a moment, introduce yourself. And uh, Hi, I'm that. the recording secretary. I'm also the deputy clerk for Oxford Township. And my only actual connection, I guess, to Rochester, other than enjoying going downtown, is um, I married a Rochester native. <laughs> Good choice. That's, that, that counts. That counts, right? Okay, good. That's, that's perfect. Absolutely. Uh, and then Christy Trevaro. Tanya, you know me, but um, I serve yep. as director of the DDA and PSD, and I've been with Rochester on and off for over 20 years now. Christy <laughs> has been through and seen it all. Uh, so and I'm uh, Ben Giovanelli. I'm the current chairman. Uh, every year, the board uh, elects a chair to represent uh, the board sort of run the meetings and, and that's what I do. Uh, I was on city council for 12 years. Uh, I did not seek re-election last term. I figured it was, I, I paid my debt to society and it was time to move on. But as all things in Rochester go, you can never completely leave, you're asked to stay. So I've been on DDA for I think eight years now. Um, I, it's my position's a resident position. So myself, mm -hmm. Eric Diana um, are, I think the two of us are the resident uh, or maybe it's Candace also, yeah. So uh, there's a there's a certain number of seats that are business owners or property owners in the district and then others that represent the residents. So Eric, Candace, and I represent the residents and Eric and I happen to live in the same great sub called Great Oaks. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, so welcome. So I wanted to run that run through that real quick and, and uh, maybe if you could take a second and just, you know, we, you all know us now. So why don't, you know, for those of us that don't know you kind of tell us a little bit about you and your place. Okay, well, I have lived in Rochester Hills for about 17 years. I came from the Flint area and uh, I opened my business. The first business was Ratatouille, the cooking school for kids about seven years, six, I think I'm going on my seventh year. And, uh, and then I bought the restaurant from the previous owner and started that it'll be four years so uh it's been a little bit of a roller coaster i had great timing right yeah no doubt <laughs> but uh you know it's been fun i love my team and i feel like i'm always a big cheerleader for rochester i love the town and i look forward to collaborating with all of you to continue to keep it great. That's awesome. Well, thanks for your service. We're welcome. You know, you're going to have plenty to do. We do have, uh, as you as you sort of alluded to, these are crazy times and we're trying to make the best of uh, the situation. Um, and, and I think uh, being a business owner, you've probably seen some of the things we've been doing, but uh, the DDA itself has been around since uh, 1983. I think was our first uh, our first TIF plan. Uh, we're funded through a tax capture. 
uh, in the district. Um, and, uh, and separately, the principal shopping district is, is the, the totally separate and distinct organization uh, that we support uh, that runs um, events in town. And the DDA is more focused on infrastructure and sort of uh, creating the um, physical environment for businesses to thrive in the downtown. So the, the PSD and the DDA work hand in hand. Uh, we always refer to that as a three-legged stool, but I always do the four-legged table as, uh, you know, uh, city council, the GDA, uh, PSD, and then sort of, uh, you know, our other uh, boards and commissions, the historical commission, um, community house. I mean, everybody's all plays a little part in it. So uh, we really try and work together in coordination to, to bring, you know, uh, to bear all the, all the uh, forces that we can to make Rochester a great place. And I, I think these people here that you see in front of you are a, a testament to that. So welcome. It's going to be awesome. And uh, you've come at the right time. We're, I think we're hopefully looking at the tail end of COVID here. We shall see in short order, but uh, mm -hmm. who knows? Fingers crossed, legs crossed, arms crossed, and so mm -hmm. we'll get through it. But uh, uh, we do have some work still ahead of us, and, and we'll uh, be, of course, responding to that as, as things pop up. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to the agenda. Approval of the minutes for the meeting on October 21st. Uh, is there any questions with respect to the minutes, or do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second a second, a second by the Puma. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. Aye. Call? We have to do What's a roll that? call. Oh, we have roll to do a roll for, call. Uh, for me to start. <laughs> Sorry. Aye, aye, aye. I always I always think it's just for the money spent, so I always forget about this one. So go ahead, Madam Clark, or Secretary. Clark. Sorry. Tony LaPuma? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Marilyn Trent? Yes. Eric Diana? Yes. Paul Haig? Yes. Candace Van Slembrook? Yes. Tanya Karsten? Yes. Chairman Giovanelli? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, audience comments? Uh, it's the, I don't see any, so I guess we'll just thank them for their attendance this evening. And uh, if, if you have any other questions, when this, this eventually uh, is shown, you know, you can contact Chris here myself and we'll get right back to you with any kind of comments. Uh, liaison reports. Uh, first up is City Council, uh, Ms. Peterson. Uh, thank you. So uh, meeting Monday night, uh, we actually um, approved uh, a, faci a facilities use interlocal agreement with Oakland County to use our fire station as a potential COVID-19 um, testing site, as well as a place to receive vaccine. <laughs> that vex a vaccine so that will be coming in the future just so you're aware of that and uh we also had um someone apply to do an event um in downtown and unfortunately the consensus because of the covid um cases uh we did uh, deny that request um until things get better um would be a great event we just hope we did ask them to you know come back next year uh, because it was more of a holiday um, event. Um, other than that, those were our two main things besides uh, approving the bid for the Gypsy Moth. So yeah. that's and, always uh, an important one. Yeah, Gypsy so, moths and mosquitoes are always the important yeah. ones, right? Yeah. And the last thing that came up under miscellaneous is that we're going to have our budget workshop on December 5th from 9 to 12. <laughs> uh, it will be a Zoom meeting, but that'll be the start of our first budget workshop. Fantastic. It's uh, it's getting to be that time, isn't it? We have to get at that after that ourselves. So we'll, we'll address that in a bit. Um, okay, so thank you very much. Any questions for uh, our city council liaison? Um, seeing none, uh, we will move forward. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, Marilyn Trent. Uh, yes, I'm unmuted. Um, two things. One of them is that the merchant market uh, it was a ribbon cutting at, and it's a market at the Fieldstone Winery and Hard Cider. I was representing the DDA, um, but it, it was a chamber ribbon cutting. And it is, a cre it's, uh, has all Michigan made foods, uh, which is really a cool idea. And it's a nice addition to, um, the, the, to our downtown as you're getting double credit, because not only are you shopping local, you're supporting locally Michigan-made Michigan -made artisans and food providers. Um, so that was a really nice event. Uh, the second thing was that the Sunrise Pinnacle Awards was very successful. It was a, 
virtual event. So if you missed it, you can go to the Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel to view it. And our very own Christy Trevorrow got the Community Hero Award um, because she alleviated fear and uncertainty when Main Street shops uh, shut down during the pandemic and advocated for compassion and teamwork. And she spread hope, sharing the motto, we are all in this together through, the, through her love local Rochester brand, creating hope and unity. That's awesome. All right, so can we have one second? Can we have a round of applause for our director, please? Round of applause. Oh, Excellent. Please. Excellent. <laughs> now, seriously, well deserved, nicely done, and uh, uh, honestly overdue. So, uh, great recognition. So, congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. I gave full credit to the board and staff and council and city administration and everybody under the sun because it's, as I say, teamwork makes the dream work. So, thanks, here, everybody. Here. Good job. Sorry, Marilyn, I just had to take the opportunity to do that. Oh, no. That was good to have, Every, a, we had to have an official it, round of applause. I needed a lead in, so you, you picked it up. I didn't even have to um, key you up. Perfect. All right, well, don't there leave. That's, That's it. Go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm all done. <laughs> oh, great, fantastic. All right, super. Uh, any questions for Marilyn? Uh, yep, seeing none, we'll move on to Historical Commission Don Sinkowitz. Don, what's going on in Historical? Anything? Are you guys still in uh, lockdown? The uh, Historical Commission, and we completed uh, our inventory of the story coloring books that we distribute during uh, and prior to Founders Day next year. Of course, the, the distribution will depend on uh, are all the kids in school or are we online learning, but uh, at least we'll have a, a good jump on how many books we'll need and what we already have. Uh, so that's from the Historical Commission. From the Rochester Heritage Days uh, team, we're going to have our Zoom meeting here shortly, uh, probably tomorrow, hopefully, or shortly thereafter. And uh, the idea is to set a preliminary date for next year's uh, Heritage Days. As we know and can remember, unfortunately, this year's Heritage Days was canceled. Uh, but during that meeting, we'll talk about what our mission is. And again, that'll be a, a Zoom meeting. And I'm, I'm assuming the, the meetings from the rest of the year, probably early part of next year, will also be Zoom meetings. So. Yeah, unfortunately, we're all living in Zoom. Base team and also from the Historical Commission. Fantastic. Well, I mean, glad to yeah, see you guys. Else, yeah. yeah, please, Paul, go. Um, Don, are you aware of Rod Wilson's exhibit that he's going to have at Oakland University? Yes. Okay. I just thought we should mention that because that's an interesting Zoom meeting. And that uh, would be, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's probably something I get. Yeah, I am aware of it. I probably need to get more details and then, uh, you know, I, that way I'd be more educated on what to communicate to the, to the group. So you have to sign up in advance for that on, uh, it's a Zoom with him presenting a lot of historic material from Rochester. And it's happened December 9th. And um, I didn't bring the card home with me, but uh, all the information should be available on Oakley University's website at least. Okay, thanks. Well, I got to work that down and I'll uh, follow up on that for sure. Sweet, maybe uh, the mayor or you know, somebody from administration could pass along and maybe pop it on the link to it on the uh, city website or that's, something. That's the first I've heard of it. Yeah, it's for me too. So um, let's get this is why we have these meetings, right? Get the maybe maybe Rod out. didn't invite us. I don't know. Oh, this no, is Rod would invite you. <laughs> 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 all, right, all right. Okay. That's funny. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for that, Don. Appreciate it. Uh, Principal Shopping District, Candace Van Slimberg. Yeah, I don't have much to report. Um, unfortunately, due to the lack of um, items on the agenda, the PSD meeting was canceled, but we are scheduled to meet again on uh, Tuesday, December 8th. Okay, so we will uh, hit pause and uh, get more updates after that meeting. I, I think that, you know, well, we'll get to it later, but I, I think that we're hopefully getting to a point where we can really start, you know, making plans for 2021 and, and keep our fingers crossed that we're gonna get back into normal and plan that way. So, uh, okay, thank you for that update, appreciate it. Uh, let's get on to general business uh, items. Uh, 
a 6A Festival of Trees payment for Rochester Community House, uh, Madam Director. Yes, so this was on our agenda uh, last month and there were concerns raised because the, uh, fest the Festival of Trees is held at Community House. Community House is not necessarily within the DDA district. So was that a concern? So we hit the pause button on this one and I inquired to Finance Director Maggio if there was a concern. He said that there was not. I asked him if he would just double check with Attorney Crott, which he made a quick phone call and said, yeah, no concern. Anthony said from a, if the DDA did wanna proceed with this for uh, to make it clean for accounting purposes, um, he would recommend making a transfer to the PSD and having the PSD coming out of the PSD budgets because it is a Festival of Trees thing. So it just keeps things even so he doesn't have to add a new line item to us and things like that. That was just his request, but it's completely up to you. But um, we were able to clear any um, legal questions. Okay, good. Well, that was the main thing. Uh, refresh us on the dollar amount again. Uh, so the total amount is uh, $3,815 if we would choose to pay the full boat. Um, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that um, what we would have been expected to pay would have been a deposit, but they never, because it's us, have never issued us a contract. So technically um, it would be for the deposit, but there was interest in possibly uh, paying the full amount, which is 3,800. So I would leave it up to the board's discussion. Yeah, that's what we talked about before. So Tanya, just to get you up to speed, um, we had originally, uh, every year uh, we rent the uh, community house for Festival of Trees. And this year, because of COVID, um, we couldn't because I think I don't, like five people could have come. Yeah, or something but like five that. people <laughs> for, per room, it wasn't gonna be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it didn't work out well. We had to move to the to, um, uh, to Royal Park, which has been great so far. So that move is great. But the problem is, is that we sort of left uh, community house in the lurch and they are not you know that was a you know it was a, it was a material fundraising hit to their budget so in, the, in the terms of just sort of being good community stewards uh, we had suggested i had suggested perhaps that we go ahead and pay for it anyway even though we're not going to be there just transfer out of uh, our um, our operating fund uh, but there was a question whether or not we could do it legally and uh, what christie's reporting right now is the fact that yeah it's not a problem we just have to transfer the money to the psd and the psd would do it so um i open up to the board as to whether or not we should proceed with this item. Uh, anybody have any thoughts? Or a motion to approve the transfer uh, to the PSD? I'd make, make a motion to move the funds to pay the uh, community house. Okay. I would uh, second that. Uh, support by it was a tie, so we'll give it to Candace this time. So Marilyn, is your your tape delay? Marilyn got you. You were just like a little I bit know. of max, a little bit of max headroom there. You weren't quite totally on it. So uh, uh, support by Vince Limbach. Uh Since this is an expenditure of money, it will be a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Recording Secretary, Candace Van Slimbrook. approve. <laughs> Paul Haig, approve. Eric Diana, approve. Marilyn Trent. Approve. Tanya Karsten. Approve. Tony LaPuma. Approve. Mayor Bixen. Yes. Chairman Giovanelli. <laughs> I was waiting for who was going to say yes, because that's the first time I was trying to say approve. And Candace threw us all off in that one, so it's her fault. But and then everybody followed suit. Everybody followed in line. I was like, the mayor's <laughs> never going to fall for that one. So, and I was right. That's awesome. Hey, Ben, right, so, we, didn't uh, hear, we didn't hear yes or no from you. Oh, I said, I said yes. So right okay. after Stewart did. So, yeah, sorry. That's super funny. Uh, so motion carries. Very yes. Good. All right, super. Uh, so we will go ahead and do that. So let Community House know and uh, th mm -hmm. thank them and apologize and say to accept this token from the PSD via the DDA as our um, uh, you know, a token of our appreciation for at least holding the space for us. Uh, update on the downtown collaboration studio lease. That would be me and Christy. Uh, mm -hmm. I will take this one since um, I had the opportunity to speak with Marty uh, on two occasions on Friday as I was driving up to the farm and then again on um, yesterday, day before yesterday. I don't know, whatever the day I say in the text, Christy, I think it was yesterday. But we were going sort of back and forth and I explained to him the uh, issues that we were talking about. And um, I actually sent him a, a section out of the lease from my office in Rochester Hills. And um, his take was, it's just, it, it seems like it overcomplicates it. And in the grand scheme of things, after talking to him about it, um, the main thing I think that we were looking for is getting stuck with a, a big, you know, material uh, equipment purchase that we would have to pay all for. 
but uh, I was informed that uh, the HVAC unit in the building was just replaced. So the likelihood, that was my biggest fear because those things are pretty expensive. Um, so you know, all that's left is going to be stuff that we would be responsible for anyway. Uh, so his take was, is he just would rather not change the lease. And in, after talking to him and after sort of going through the whole thing, um, to me, it was, you know, sort of, it, it wasn't worth the extra battle. So I don't think there's a lot of there, there after talking with him about it. Um, you know, of course I'll be proven wrong because I did that, but, uh, um, but in going through it, the, my biggest fear was us getting stick with a $50,000 air conditioning in it, which is not the case. Um, but I, I will say that in going through that, it occurred to me, Christy, we ought to make sure on our insurance that we have plate class insurance. Um, yep. So double check with the city on that one, because as I was going through that, it just occurred to me that now that we're on street level, that, uh, um, you know, th there's going to be additional things that we're going to have to make sure that we got. I'm sure we do, or, you know, I'm sure Anthony. I'm sure we do, but I'll double check. It is through the DDA's insurance. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, so uh, long story long is that uh, Marty's take was, is he was, that was the lease and it's, you know, and he is not inclined to change it. Um, yeah, after talking to him about it, I mean, I don't see a whole ton of exposure for us, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, and I've done a fair number of these over the years. So, uh, my recommendation would be just to execute it as is. Um, and that's sort of my uh, reply back to the board. So I open it up for discussion to see if that's sufficient or if we still want to keep going back. Anyone? I'll say, hey, maybe I think we should go forward, but Chrissy, with the insurance, besides play class insurance, maybe we should give power, outer, power outage insurance too. Because that's common when if there's a power outage, a furnace going out. I lost two in one year in one building. So Especially downtown. Yeah. Yeah, downtown. I'll be to ask about that. That's cheap. Sure. That's cheap. Just to protect okay. us. Okay. Yep. hundred percent. Because everything else that, that was on their doors and all the other stuff, I mean, that, that's typically where items that we were, you were, we would be responsible for it anyway. So I just wasn't um <laughs> it, it's fine. So um but yeah good thing about the electric Tony that's actually a very a very important point. And I, mean, I, I hate to even mention it in these times, but, um, you know, civil disobedience also. <laughs> um, so we might want to just double check and make sure what our coverage is there as well. Sure. Um, but aside from that, um, so Tony, you seem like you were okay with it. Anybody else have any other um, thoughts, uh, Mr. Mayor? I mean, in general, I'm okay with it. But as I said before, we have the leverage. We should get what we want. And if he's going to be a bad neighbor, let's move on. Why, well, I don't know why we're giving into Marty Cyber here. That's yeah, my I mean, opinion. I, yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and But like I said, the main thing that I was worried about is getting stuck with big stuff, and it's already been replaced. So the likelihood of anything really happening is very small. Um, so it was a matter of picking battles, and it just didn't seem like that one was worth it for me. But that's my personal take, and and uh, but I am with you 100%. I, I agree. Um, he's getting a good tenant that's uh, obviously a great credit risk, and uh, um, but he also knows that we're already in the space and we want it, so it's that kind of takes away some of the leverage too. So, um, but anyway, it's it is what it is. Um, so I guess at this point, everybody's seen the lease. Uh, I'm sorry, Marilyn, go ahead. Well, not to pile on, <laughs> but. So you're saying that somebody has looked at the place and said that the HVAC would be the only thing or one of the few things that could go wrong. I, I mean, are we saying that anything that goes wrong, then that the tenant has to pay for it? Is there like the roof blows off and, and we have to pay for it? I mean, we're... Well, a lot um, of that stuff's covered by our insurance anyway, just as a normal course of business, but it would be, right? But, so, it, but that's what it is, though. The roof gets bad. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. understand that the way it usually works is in a lease, um, if the landlord pays, you know, uh, if that's the landlord's responsibility, he'll get insurance and he'll charge us the insurance for it, or it's covered under our insurance. So we just need to make sure it's covered. That's all. Those kind of damages, it goes back to what Tony was talking about with the electric, just making sure that's covered as well, is the, those type of things um that's always he's, he's guaranteeing the roof and the outside walls correct on that lease yes yep yes so yep. Oh, yeah. it's covered yeah okay. I, I don't that's like what i, I said, just I... wondered where was the limit i mean i'm a landlord but i'm a really good nice landlord just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're the tenant also that's right 
No, I actually am a landlord. <laughs> I know, right? That's great. I it's have like people in there, and I'm really, really nice. Now I'm thinking I'm changing my lease. See, so you're, you're, you're I didn't know right. to go in there right. and do a big finger point, and tell them to sit down and listen. Right, that's funny. Uh, uh, Madam Director, I just like to say, Martin has been a good landlord for the time we've been here. Anytime we had any little problem, any anything, either um, he was here or he sent his maintenance guy over here within yeah. an hour. Marty would come and follow up and make sure everything was okay, call the next day. So other than whatever's going on with the lease and everyone's feelings about that, he yeah. has, but anytime we've had a small issue, which they have been just like little things, he's been here and on it and gotten taken care of and we have not been billed or anything. Yeah, yeah thank you for saying that. Actually, I was gonna mention that. that it, it, Marty said that his between, it's usually his guy or I don't know, but and, and if anything needs to get done, his guy takes care of it. He said, don't worry about it. So it just sort oh, of reminded well, me- feel I'm sorry, go ahead. No, please go ahead. Oh, I just was say it's it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, like the down south handshake deals. How oh, don't worry about it, buddy. We got you. We'll take care of you. But it's, you know, there there's it's there's a little bit of that and it, it kind of worries me, but it doesn't uh, it's going to be fine. Marty's a good guy and and I think that we have nothing to worry about. So Not um, notwithstanding we are up north and I did live in the south for a really long time. Right. I know. Oh. I, got my, my, I hope my it's pepper. the same handshake. I hope it's the same handshake. I'm just saying. Yeah, just but yes, it makes me feel a lot better. Right. Yeah, the deals are down with a wink and a, yeah. and a handshake yeah, and a, a little bit of, little bit of drawl. But anyway, so he's going to do a like good job, boss. He's going to take yes, care sir. of us. Good. Uh, that makes here, me feel so. much better. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, Paul. Famous last you also, all have to realize that Marty was with the DDA for a good amount of time right. too. And this is a very public thing for him to do to give us sure. this lease and give us everything else. And <clears throat> Marty's a good guy. Yeah. And I, uh, I fully approve of this. Yeah, it'll be fine. So uh, I guess th at this point, uh, we've all seen the lease and had a chance because we've actually talked about it before. So in effect, the version that was sent around probably last meeting uh, was the execution version. So at this point, we could either uh, accept or somebody could make a motion to uh, authorize uh, myself and the director to uh, enter into um, uh, a lease uh, on the space, or we could, uh, or you can ask to review it again, and we could do it at the next meeting. Um, the, we're getting towards the end of the year, so I think we should probably get after it pretty quick. So my recommendation would be to uh, somebody to go ahead and-, and I'll uh, make a motion. I'll, uh, to to what? To accept the lease and go okay, forward okay. with it. Okay. All right. Authorize the director and the chairman to enter mm -hmm. into the lease, right? Took the word I'll right out of my that. mouth. Okay. Good deal. Uh, uh, motion by Haig, support by La Puma. Uh, expansion of money. Oh, this is a big one. So, uh, Madam uh, Recording Secretary, the roll. Mm -hmm. Tony La Puma? Yes. Mayor Bixson? Yes. Marilyn Trent? Yes. Eric Diana? Yes. Paul Haig? Yes. Candace Van Slimbrook? Yes. Tanya Karsten? I don't know. I don't know what I'm voting on. So. Oh, you can. Uh... Can I abstain or can I not? Not abstain. That's the wrong word. What do I do? Because I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, no. You, you can just, you can say no. Well, I don't want to say no. I don't really know what I'm. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't abstain unless you have a financial interest in the deal, which you do not. So you have to vote yes or no. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I guess I'll vote yes. I just didn't know all the details. So There's no peer pressure. Yeah, okay. there's no peer pressure at all. In fact, if you if you wanted to, you, we could do an intervening motion, or we could have you abstain just because you haven't been brought up to speed on it. She can't. Um, she is, can't abstain for that reason. Oh, it has okay. to be a financial right. interest. Got it. Okay. All right. Yes or no. So. Okay. I'll just say like yes with okay, the note no that I'm not quite sure of all the details. But. <laughs> Chairman Giovanelli. Uh, approve. Motion passed. Sorry. <laughs> I had to do that for Candace. Thank I know you. She, she would appreciate that. Yes. Thanks. All right. <laughs> That's right. Very good. All right, so that is uh, done behind us. Uh, Fire and Ice alternate plan. Uh, Nick is not with us. He has uh, City Beautiful, so Christy's going to update us. 
Sure. Madam Director. So um, as Nick mentioned at the last meeting, we have been talking a little bit with Oakland County. They are not prepared to make any commitments to fire and ice that yet. They want to talk in December. Obviously, this is before all the cases started spiking. So I'm not quite sure where they are. Um, from our perspective, downtown, we've already started uh, putting out things for ice sculptures that will still do the ice part of it. Um, we've also contacted are the carvers that do our um, big display carvings and also do the collegiate competition and we're in talks with them so that we'd be able to continue all of that part of it. Uh, we did reach out to the county per the board's request to get um, information about their fireworks contract if that was something we might be able to assume they have not sent that back to us. But as I went through minutes from our different committee meetings with fire and ice at Oakland County, it looks like the contract would be it's 10,000 it's 5,000 per evening for the fireworks. So I think that's would be a ballpark. Um, but hopefully at our December meeting, because they said talk to them at the beginning of December, we'd have a little bit more definitive answer. And that's only a couple of weeks away. But I'd be really surprised if the county was able to try and do something just because Fire Nice, as you know, brings so many darn people. But we're working on a shopping promotion and to at least keep the ice piece of it. And then we can bring back the fireworks as a discussion at a future yeah. meeting. God, such a toughie. Uh, anybody have any thoughts? Eric, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, with saying that, if the county gives its blessing, um, does the DDA have any liability um, if it was like a, you know, an event that spread COVID, um, it was found like spread COVID, is there any liability on our part? You want me to take this one or? Because we've been doing events outdoors um, all summer with the fire, with farmers market, all of those kinds of things. We didn't have to get anything new or different onto our insurance. Um, the difference with what we're doing with fire and ice, we're not putting people indoors and we would not be encouraging them to gather. What we're talking about are things that are walk by, drive by okay. types of items. We're not talking about the tubing hill, skating rink, all that kind okay. of stuff. Fireworks is something you can watch from afar in your own location. Um, same thing with the ice sculptures, people just kind of walking down the street kind of a thing. It's in the promotions we've been doing, same thing, it's all self-guided. So we've been very cautious with anything that we've been doing to make sure we don't do that. But I'm certain that is a great question and that would be on Oakland County's mind. Um, in addition to, I don't know if they'd want us to use the fire and ice name, nor do I know that we'd want to use it because I feel like that sets an expectation of what we would be offering. And we're not offering that big old party. So um, it, I think there's a lot of discussions to be had for sure, but we haven't had to pull any kind of special insurance for any of the events we've done this summer. And okay, I, don't, you know, I was concerned so, about that, so thank you. Yeah, no, 100%, and, but just as in my normal day job, uh, insurance companies are actually not covering that exposure, so I don't know if you would actually be able to get coverage for it. Uh, it's just, a, uh, it's a super gray area of the law right now, and because um, we actually inquired about it in our, our multiple carriers are like yeah no we're not because how are you going to prove where you got it but the okay. better question is the political part of it right so you know bringing all those people into town and something happens it's huge <laughs> right so uh we're going to try and avoid that uh, at all costs and, and be responsible like we've done so far i mean it's not to chrissy's point we've been over backwards to make sure that we've complied with all of the um uh, you know, re regulations and whatnot in place, and we would absolutely continue to do so. It feels like um, this is more of a PSD thing. Um, it yeah, it yes. definitely is, but the board had requested information, so yeah. I would No, no, I, no, no, yeah. that's great. So, um, so I guess we'll just, you know, take it under advisement. Um, uh, we'll have blank and ice, I guess, is going to be the, uh, <laughs> yeah. something ice, else in ice. <laughs> ice, ice and ice, we'll have ice and ice. Uh, so we'll, we'll do something, um, to make it fun, but, you know, to Christy's point, it's going to be, you know, um, something that's not going to encourage crowds because that is, um, obviously not optimal at this point. So, yeah. um, and, uh, as the mayor knows, we can't legislate morality. So when you even set those things yeah. into place they end up becoming self-fulfilling prophecies. So just, we just don't want to encourage it. Uh, but we want people to have some sense of normalcy. So there's the balance, right? I mean, that's why we're trying to, you know, sort of keep things going and give people hope. Um, so, okay, so we'll stay tuned. Thank you for the update. Appreciate that. Um, uh, and that dovetails nicely, which we're already sort of talking about is our ongoing uh, discussion efforts on uh, our lovely friend COVID. Fun times. 
Madam Director. So this is something that came up at executive committee that the mayor brought up. Well, obviously we're not out of the woods with COVID yet. So we need to start talking about 21 and where is this going, especially since obviously the weather's turning on us, especially this week from 77 to 51. And what is this gonna look like for us? And so um, he wanted us to bring it to the board and talk about, okay, what are our long-term plans? Maybe start you know, thinking about it now, bring it back into summer and start talking about it a little more. I and mean, obviously since March, we've done a great job of getting on top of new ideas, creative ideas, eventing without eventing, finding ways to support the businesses and give them sales and support and, and different things. And we're certainly planning on continuing that, but we wanted to throw it out to the board to kind of see what everyone's thoughts are. And if there's any new ideas, things that we've done in the past that you thought were very effective that you want to make sure that is in our toolbox going forward, things like that. So we just wanted to come send to start the discussion here so that we're not waiting until we're in the deep of winter. <sighs> Hot potato, anybody? <laughs> There you go. I'll be a little hot potato. Sure um, I have a re family relation that's uh, in Big Pharma, and uh, she's pretty much stated there will be four vaccines that are approved by the FDA before the end of the year. So that will be great news. And um, I'm not, I mean, that's a, a statement from someone who works there. So uh, let's hope it's true and hope it works out. As to Rochester, you've been pretty careful. And I think that, you know, I won't let anybody in my store without a mask. I hand them a mask and I have big guards. And I think we have to not let our own guards down. We have to keep people wearing masks right now with what's happening with COVID. And so, excuse me, I didn't mean to say keep. <clears throat> we do. We should, <laughs> yeah, we should ask people <laughs> to please wear masks. I would comply with the uh, CDC and uh, state of Michigan uh, requirements. Excellent. Thank you. Well put. And so we don't get sued. Correct. Yeah. One thing that we've been doing at the studio throughout, and we're going to send out a new blast to the merchants probably tomorrow, um, right when everything happened and they had the mask mandate, we went ahead and um, created some Love Local Rochester posters with little, you know, try to make it light, but mask required um, to enter the premises and then had little emojis on it with little masks on them and then the love local logo on it and a lot of the merchants took those we made a holiday version they now have elf hats and <laughs> a santa hat but they're still masked and ready to go so we're going to send those out and then also um, we still have on hand from the fire department um, boxes of disposable masks and gloves and sanitizer so we're going to put that out to the merchants again that if they still need supply that they can come see us i see you tanya way <laughs> see you tomorrow we'll hook you up um because we still have access to all of those things because i know a lot of people are still wanting like paul was saying having masks available to customers because they still have people walking in without a mask which i don't know how that works but like you don't know by now but okay yeah. But the gloves, the gloves are so expensive right now when you can find. It's it's such a bummer because I went, uh, I was at Meyer yesterday and they're all over the parking lot. I'm like, come on people, dig deep. Yeah, yeah we've got Good gloves, course. we've got all different sizes because there are things that were left over from some of the PPE kits from Oakland County. Okay. So yeah, just stop by and we can figure out some sizing for you. Mm -hmm. Way to give some to Grant's Pizza House because they literally could not get their hands on any and they didn't know how they were going to open the next day because they mm -hmm. went out. So, so we, I guess that that's a great point is just continuing the outreach mm -hmm. and making sure that everybody knows what resources we have to bring to bear. Um, we can't mm -hmm. solve everybody's problems. Um, right. I, I wish we could. Uh, but we can certainly be facilitators of helping those, um, you know, that need the help and pointing them to where, and Christy and her team have done just a yeoman's job in that regard. So uh, we'll continue to do that. Uh, my take is, is that we have to plan for 2021 on, and Paul kind of teed this up, but vaccine versus no vaccine, because a lot of this is mental. Um, so people feeling confident and you're, you're going to have people that are going to, it's going to, it's not going to be a, fire hose it's going to be a slow trickle of people coming back and feeling comfortable to come back so mm -hmm. i say that as we go through the goals and objectives process and start thinking about 2021 um we talk about you know what happens if you know um, the biden dark winter happens or if you know we have you know the vaccine and everybody's you know sort of feeling better about themselves so you know door number one door number two so 
Uh, I think that's how we ought to be planning for 2021. I will say that uh, we spent a ton of money last year to at this. Uh, there was uh, uh, just for you know for your catch up, Tanya. We spent probably about 1.1 million dollars over the course of two fiscal years. So our fiscal year ends on June 30th. Uh, to support the downtown um, with parking, support of the parking fund, and also um, uh, paid for the uh, PSD assessment for this year. So um, I, I don't want to say the cupboards are running bare, but they're getting, you know, um, we're getting to the point now where we have to start be, being really careful with, you know, what we have left and uh, be mindful of that. So I'm hoping and praying as everybody I think on this call is, as this nonsense gets behind us and we can sort of get our lives back and not have to deal with this anymore. And we can plan yet again for our, our, our beautiful little town square that was going to be so outstanding at farmer's market. Um, that will happen, I promise. Uh, it's just gonna be a couple more years. We will get after it, but um, yeah, please go ahead. Oh, one other thing, we've been talking about it internally and talking uh, with it a little bit with some of our volunteers is that we really feel like, as you know me, I'm all about the long game. I think, Ben, exactly your point is correct that even if, let's say that there's a magic vaccine, everybody gets it cool, but I still feel like there's going to be a lot, of, there's a lot of people that still won't go out to eat, that still aren't comfortable going out of their homes, being in groups. So I feel like next year we're going to have sort of like two parallel paths. Yeah, we want to do, you know, the big events again. And we probably, if, if we're allowed to, and we can do that in the, that environment, then we will. But I feel like these smaller boutique events that we put together, like the Magical Mural Tour and Taste of Fall and things like that, that are more self-guided, that people can do at their own pace, they feel comfortable with. We got a great response on those. I think it will be continuing a lot of things and maybe creating more of those. So we have two parallel paths. The people that are ready to just go for it, good. The people that are not, we need to ease them in at their own pace as well. And so I think that's something that I'm going to be talking about a lot. It goes an objective specifically with PSD, but of course, sharing with DDA, because we've talked about maybe interlocking those two goals and objectives meetings so that everybody's on the same page. Yeah, so I think that's some of the stuff that we've been working on. I mean, would I um, be lying if I didn't say that I do have um, a big swing event in mind for September? I do, but we're not there yet. But if I can do it, I think I got one for you guys. It's a good one too. I just will have the COVID pinatas all through the downtown and we'll just whack them off on the, uh, just the on the bell hook lights. Just everybody yeah. can go by and just beat them with a stick. It'll be great. Yikes. Uh, uh, Anne, did you have your hand up? Sorry. So I just wanted to add on to this uh, conversation um, from the fact that uh, I had actually reached out to Christy as well because I had heard um, that uh, of this restaurant's they said we're probably not going to have a full comeback until like 2025. And so when I heard that, I was very concerned because of how our downtown is, you know, played out. So um, I think that in these discussions, as Christy just mentioned, of really planning uh, those two different paths and doing different things is something we really need to be really um, prudent and doing and also the discussions regarding the parking deck because I think that you know my own personal opinion I think the city needs to step in and um, help with some of this and figure out a way as well because I know we cannot put another special assessment on our business owners you know for that uh, we cannot do any of those things um, because we're trying to save these businesses right now with everything that the DDA has been doing which has been phenomenal uh, compared to other communities, uh, people have told me that I've been out and about of how, how much nicer it is being able to come to a community where you can actually come and do these things um, and feel welcomed and, you know, and not that afraid. So um, it's, it's very interesting because in my line of work, I'm with people every single day as well. So I, I do know the effects this has had and I just think for our own community we really have to, you know, look at it straight on and say, okay, so what's the next four years going to look like if that prediction is correct? Uh, because it's going to really be uh, detrimental to our community and our business owners. And I don't want to see us lose any more businesses downtown. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, I agree with you on the restaurants. It's, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'll just, just piggy, piggybacking what Council Member Peterson said. Um, the lack of people downtown has... I don't want to say devastated, but has really hurt the, the revenue from the parking um, situation. So that's something that 
city the DEA I think we're all going to have to deal with somehow because the yeah, I, is way down yeah that's uh, that was yeah. that was always my fear and I kind of figured that we would be having to sort of continue on our partnership for a while so yeah. um so. but that's going to be I think the biggest thing obviously no big capital in our near future but uh uh, we will get through it together, right? Yep. Um, we That's the thing. We just have to deal with the hands that we're dealt. Don, did you have a point that you wanted to make? And I noticed uh, now maybe a time time issue, but I was downtown at about 5 o'clock this evening, and I noticed that the parking meters were all off. Is that, was that a daylight saving time issue? Or <laughs> Not another? supposed to be off. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were, the screens were blank and they were wrong. At least the oh, ones, ones that I- It's Veterans Day. Yes. Oh, okay, so- yeah, It's off because it's Veterans Day. Sorry, I'm like, I know this. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, that's the first, I was on council for 12 years and I voted for all those budgets and I never knew that it was even- I, know, so. I, I That's the first I heard of it too. <laughs> yeah, Veterans Day. <laughs> All right, well, Maybe the go. chief uh, is making decisions out there. I, don't I know. guess so. Yeah, he got that software changed really quick for Veterans Day. Yikes. Marilyn, please. So, okay. You're saying that there is a, is it consistently down uh, the, after the uh, parking was reinstated to charge people? So well, you're we're, saying. Yeah, we're still, we're still getting data, but it's, it's significantly down. And then the month, the holiday months really make, you know, make a lot of extra money to make it even, even it out. And if that goes away, then it's even going to be worse. So, so you're saying supplemental money would be appreciated? Well, I'm just saying is we're, we're going to have a meeting and figure out what that number is on top of having to redo all the parking meters like we talked about the other day. Yeah, that's uh, okay. So that the redoing the park, so we discussed if we didn't redo them, it's like we almost have to redo them. Is that that? But was it's like two G, the technology. The technology, it will stop working. So then we yeah, can't. Yeah, we can't. We can't replace them because the technology is. They're not supporting it anymore. I just thought maybe they'd come up with something better. Uh, I've still got one of the old that's meters fine. in my office. So I'm happy to donate it back. If there you, you want. go, we'll take it. It's even got, it even had the little green cup in it and it had a dime in it when I, when I got there it. There you go. Yeah, uh, we just, that, yeah, the old ones were lasting forever. Okay. Uh, well, that's all so, I, but yeah. Actually, that's Jeff all Mattis had threatened to go downtown with a, a sawzall right. and cut all the meters off. Remember that? That was hilarious. Right. Uh, yeah, well, I, still, uh, I still get text messages from people, you know, even like last weekend. Can I park for free? Just, you know, and I go, no. <laughs> They well, you can if the, if, the, if, the, if the ordinance officer isn't around. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. Uh, so, so I guess, and that was kind of in, my, in the back of my mind in terms of big spend for next year. I, I really think that that's going to be, uh, I, I fear that that was going to happen. We'll wait and see as the numbers come in from finance, but I'm sure that will be one of our largest expenditures in next year's budget is going to be uh, partnering with the uh, the parking advisory or the parking district to, to uh, support uh, parking again. So, uh, yeah, sorry, just in happen. case you guys wanted to do the ring on my phone, uh, Stuart, I appreciate it. It's, let's go no. blue. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, and, uh, all right. So. Long story long is that uh, budget, uh, we're getting the goals and objectives. It's in January. Uh, Christy, we had uh, ventured to get together before that and have some ideas. We're going to do another joint meeting in December. Is that how, where did we leave off on that? Yep. Hold on, checking my calendar. So um, we had talked about maybe doing something the week of the 6th. The PSD has their next meeting on December 8th. Ours would be December 9th. Um, we could certainly invite them to the meeting on the 9th if you want to do that, or we can try and get a, step, a separate meeting. It's just I know December is hard for people with the holidays. But, I'd um, like to do separate them, us, and then have uh, a joint where we sort of compare notes. Does that make sense? Sure. Do you want to maybe, if they're doing Tuesday, we go Wednesday. Do you want to try a Thursday night, or do you want to go? It's fine by me. So what's 12-9? Uh, what day is uh, that? 12-9 is our next meeting. That's a Wednesday. 
Okay. Uh, why don't we, uh, I don't suspect we're going to have a huge agenda for our next meeting. Um, I don't know what else is on the pike. We, uh, the lease was the big thing that, that I knew of. So maybe we just make our 12, our regular meeting in uh, next meeting. And we can talk about this exec, but I think now as a board, we can sort of just settle on it. Why don't we plan on our next regularly scheduled meeting to be sort of a pre-plan for uh, 2021. So everybody put on your thinking caps um and then uh, i will get with uh, christy and i will get with anthony and see if we can get sort of a, a crystal ball into the parking thing so i can get a feel for what that might look like for us and what uh revenues we can sort of kind of expect for next year and and, and we'll start that process have that discussion and then psd will have theirs they can assume their budget status quo um i would for their planning purposes i would plan on the dda not picking up the PSD assessment again, just for now, because I don't know what that all looks like. It feels to me like we're going to have to pick which kid we love more. And um, I think the um, amount of debt service on the parking structures is going to be the kid that's going to require our most of our attention. So um, either way, it ends up being a cost for downtown. So um, that's just my take, but we'll talk about that at our next meeting. So kind of I would start thinking about those things um, Christy, if you could put together the standard list of our, you know, ongoing projects, sidewalks, lights, yada, yep. yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to put off everything that we can put off. So I'm going to lean on site to really sort of, you know, um, bring to us the things that we can delay and the things that we can't delay and the things that we can't delay. I, I think it's important that we know why we can't delay on them. Uh, I, I really feel like everything's going to have to get shoved an, uh, a year forward, sadly, um, and then we're just going to have to focus on survival for one more year. Mm -hmm. um, but that's my take. Eric, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, is there any supplementary uh, information that the board members could have that, you know, kind of like shows, okay, what is the amount of the debt service on the parking structure? Just just basic information that we can, you know, I'd love to be able to phone up before. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, 100%. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, no, it was all part of our previous packet, so we'll have to dig it up. I will, uh, I, you know what, uh, ha have you ever spoken with Anthony Maggio, our, our finance director? Uh, I, I have, yes. All right, so shoot an email to Anthony and ask him for, um, I, I may have some stuff and I'll send it to you. I think you've got my email. Uh, I'll send it to you separately, but he's he is the keeper of all. Uh, the, all of our scorecard, right? So um, he will have the debt service information for you um, on the, um, the the bond debt, and then also to on the maintenance and um, uh, capital. Uh, and as the mayor alluded to earlier, we've also got another what is it, four hundred grand for uh, meter replacement, Stuart? Something like uh, that. Well, only three hundred, I think. Only three hundred. <laughs> okay, so. Bank error in our favor. Uh, yeah, so um, it's the, the little the little surprises in life that keep things interesting. But uh, yeah, between myself and Anthony uh, and, and Christy digging up the old packets, we will get uh, both you and Tanya up to speed so you guys can, um, you know, kind of, we can all be level set as to the discussion on that. Mr. Chairman, would you be okay if I CC'd you on the email to Anthony as well? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, right. no, I'm, that's why I'm here. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> All right. So the next meeting, uh, we're going to focus on uh, planning for 2021. Um, there'll be a very light regular business agenda. It'll be largely just this topic. So uh, it'll be fun. Can't wait. Make the downtown great again. Uh, Get red hats. Uh, oh, no. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no. We're, I've, we're done with that. We're, I'm moving on. Uh, what else we got? I think just regular reports. Regular reports. We kind of drifted from COVID into the budget, so I think we're good there. So uh, let's do regular reports, executive director update. Uh, the only thing that is not included in my executive director update is the Festival of Trees, which is happening next weekend. We're doing move in next Monday. So um, we have more trees sponsored than ever before. So we're hoping people will come out. It's a self-guided tour on Saturday and Sunday to uh, walk around. We have a few in the gallery, which is like they call the hallway at the hotel, but it's not a hallway, it's the gallery. So it's the gallery and then leading out to the big event pavilion out back where uh, a lot of our things will be as well. So a little bit of everywhere, but keeping it safe, keeping it real, but uh, it's gonna be a different festival, but at least it's at the hotel, it'll be pretty. So. Yeah, right. 
is so is the hotel responsible for um, you know uh, body count inside and all that sort of compliant stuff, or are our staff going to handle that? So for Friday night for the um, the cocktail preview, we have volunteers that are handling all of that, and then on the weekend, um, both our volunteers and staff will be there. Usually the weekends historically at Community House have not been super busy. It's been very manageable. We'd usually have you know maybe like 20, 30 people at a time, and that's throughout the entire hotel. It's going to be extremely manageable. So, um, okay. but Friday night, um, it's it's sort of a, a group thing, everybody getting along. So we'll see, but we are, um, we can only sell a limited amount of tickets for the cocktail. So that is sold out now. So. Got it. Yeah. Uh, by group thing, we mean a six foot socially distance group thing. Right. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. And being in there will be nice friendly signs with ornaments and characters that are telling people they need to do what they need to do. So. Right. Excellent. Very good. All right. So that's great. Uh, anything else uh, from your side other than you had a great vacation? We did have a nice vacation. Disney did it did it very well. We felt completely safe, but still magical. So that was nice. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed the last couple of days, you may have seen some light show tests downtown. Um, we are moving along and things are looking good. So light should be up soon. So they decided to update my uh, timer and controller system. And of course, it's not working. So... <laughs> Nice. I had an analog thing. They gave me this new fancy digital thing. Mm -mm. No. Nice. So, uh, so uh, at, with respect to the lights, as we all know, it seems to be the buzz around town is when that's going to happen and how we're going to do it. Uh, so it feels like this is as good a spot as any to have this discussion. I know we talked about it executive. I sort of joked that we would do a baby pool and uh, the mayor would be the only one that would know the exact date and time and then uh, whoever won. But um, I don't know if there's been, if you guys have any fun stuff to do or if it's, they're just going to go on and that's it, which is probably honestly the best way to do it. But uh, yeah. I, I, well, what we've been telling everyone, quite honestly, is that we don't want a self-fulfilling lanyard yeah. because that's why we're not having the event. So I think yeah. it's just the first test that we run that everything's working. I think we're just going to leave them on. <laughs> and Excellent. then posted we've got I already took a picture one of the nights of a section that was working and so I'm ready to post and be like lights on and it's going to be ready to go but we're, we're looking pretty good they're uh, working again this week to see if we can figure out the timer and controller issue and fix a few buildings just like it normal you plug them in one day everything's fine the next day six things are out makes no sense but life life in general Christy life in general <laughs> what, yeah. what's, uh, what's the tentative time, time? Um, I was say, we couldn't start a gambling pool on when the lights will actually be on. Like yeah, right. um, wide, everybody yeah. gives 50 bucks. Winner gets 500. The rest goes to the DDA. 50-50, yeah. 50-50. Yeah, yeah, like, well, come on, let's start raising some money, people. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting texts over here from board members trying to get me to tell them the date. Anyway... Right. Yes. So mayor, I was just trying to get it to just spill the beans. So, <laughs> I mean, Honestly, if I knew, I would tell you, but I would say it's going to be super soon but right now i can't flip the switch it's it's not um the show's not ready so as soon as they're ready right as soon as they're ready and uh yep and they're working on them tomorrow and friday so i'm really i'm hoping really soon trust me Good. we get about 25 phone calls a day over here asking us and then we get the people hey, like, oh yeah but then now people have like start coming back well you know <sighs> My son's going to be in town. I'm not going to tell you. I don't either. It's not working. Right. Everybody has a sob story why they want me to tell. Oh, I won't tell anybody. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. But but we don't know because right now it's they're not operable. So so pick pick one person, tell them the date and time, and then see how quickly it gets around town. And you'll know who it right. was. That's tell me. I'll spread around the whole city. <laughs> Tony, right. I love you, but you're the last human I would tell. My goodness. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to tell Ben and I, though, right? <laughs> yeah, truer words have never been spoken. Yeah, I, I like the soft the soft open. Just yeah. do it, flick the switch and whatever. Um, and that's good. We we typically do it, try and do it before Thanksgiving. So this is this is this is gonna be awesome. So good stuff. Just make it happen and uh, we'll all be surprised at the same time. It'll be wonderful. Yes. All right, very good. Um events and marketing. We kind of did that ish. Did that. I don't know if everyone has gotten their in town magazine yet. Yeah. Uh, that, I haven't been in your mailbox yet. I got it. I think it just came. I think Julie's got it. Yeah, so we, so they so just hit the came. mailbox on our post office on Friday, and some people actually got it Saturday. So, but it's it's a good one. Good, kind of excellent. It, so. And actually, the you wouldn't be able to tell by the photo, but we actually shot this in the studio. So look, it's also a photo studio in here. I see. <laughs> look Perfect. at us. We're just maximizing already paying, the space. Already paying for itself. Look at it. Look at it go. 
Makes sense. Uh, financial report is in the packet. If anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, pass them along to Christy or myself, and we'll be happy to answer them. Fairly straightforward. Um, BizDev? Uh, you're muted, Paul. Hey, Ben. We um, did not have a meeting this month, so I, I don't have anything to say. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, Anne, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to um, let you know I have to jump off here. Um, okay. But I do want to thank you all for making the decision to uh, put the DDA on the main street and keep it there. I think it's very important uh, to have that um, have that location and have the accessibility of the DDA to all the business owners right there. And it just makes the town look awesome. So thank you. Here, here. Agreed. 100%. Uh, site development. Kind of quiet this time of year, so really nothing. Okay. Uh, like I said, the big thing for me is uh, we'll be leaning on you guys heavily for 2021 uh, planning. So, uh, you know, dust off your uh, lists and put your thinking cap on and kind of let us know what your thoughts are in that regard. Will do. Uh, pa Paul? Yes, I have a couple things for miscellaneous. Tanya, you're missing an a, a opportunity. We need you to say the name of your business, the hours, and the address so everybody can hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. So it's Tanya's Victorian Rose. It is a tea room, but more importantly, it is a full-fledged restaurant. We serve food there. I've been told so many times that people don't realize that we serve food. We specialize in comfort food. So chicken pot pies, quiches, soup salad sandwiches, desserts. We are open right now, Wednesdays through Saturdays from 11 to two. However, uh, around Thanksgiving and afterward, I think we'll be open on Sundays just to accommodate all of the, if there's going to be a, a rush for the holidays. And we will also be open on some evenings. Uh, we're going to do our own, um, a Christmas story themed dinner on the night that we normally would have done caroling in the streets. So we just couldn't give it up. We love that evening and we're just gonna all wear our ugly sweaters anyway, so. Excellent. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome, well done. Yes, sir. Second thing is I just wanna congratulate you, Ben. You've been a great DDA chair. You're doing a great job. Wow, thank you. That, uh, I, that, I appreciate that. I don't, uh, we're just, all, 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 and all, and all for one and one for all. So, but thank you, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, it makes me feel better that uh, this has all been, you know, it, it's fun, right? I mean, I just the whole thing has been, you know, you guys have been just such a blessing, and everybody on this board has been awesome to deal with. And, and since there's nobody else here, I can say it's been a shit sandwich this year, and um, you know, uh, everybody has really stepped up, and um, and and I couldn't be prouder to serve with you guys. So really appreciate that. Um, I did want to uh, just mention really quick uh, in miscellaneous uh, about the restaurants, and, and Tanya, you had brought this up, and, and actually um, uh, others had spoken about it earlier about the slow recovery of restaurants and then being hit at the hardest. I think also, too, as we prepare for next year, be cognizant of the fact that we're going to do everything we can to help out, especially with the platforms. Those are already built, and we'll continue to, to place them next year. I'd ask Nick, who's not on the call. But I asked him to get with PAC and, and give us a number of, you know, if we had to air quote, buy a parking spot for the summer, what that would look like, or if the merchants wanted to do this, if everything sort of settled down. Uh, my goal, I think our goal is, I, I think those things uh, provided a great deal of ambiance and provided a safety valve for the restaurants. Uh, and I think it's important to do that. I, I had suggested that we try to continue that through the winter, but I was informed that uh, the plow trucks don't like those things very much and they uh so we had to sort of deal with it in that fashion but you know there's other ways to do it i have a, a very good friend of mine is uh owner of the union joints uh, restaurants and uh in clarkston they actually closed off uh, church street and uh, uh Kurt, they tented the catalos tented the entire street uh, they created a social district there because of they own all the restaurants on the block so the city of clarkston let them close <laughs> the street off and tent it and it's just, uh, it's going to be awesome for them. I mm -hmm. wish we could do that for our, our folks here. And uh, so far, that's 
haven't been able to cross that bridge, but I, I think that, um, you know, at least for it, this person, uh, our restaurants are super important to our, uh, our downtown and it's a very key part of our fabric and I want to make sure that we support them. So everybody's equally as important, but those guys are just mm -hmm. taking the real brunt of this. So I want to make sure that's out there. So as we plan for 2021, just be cognizant of that. Aside from that, uh, eight, uh, one hour and eight minutes. Uh, so this is pretty good for us. So uh, if there's anybody else with anything, have one thing. Oh, Candace, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Christy, um, do we have an update on the neighborhood light fight night that we were proposing? Oh, yeah. Yes, we actually opened registration for that uh, last week, or no, this week, Sunday. Sorry, I, all my days are running together. So it's Sunday, and we got our first uh, group in. We've already had to adjust it a little bit because we have some people that have told us that some of their neighbors in between are Grinches, and they're going like around the corner in some areas. So it's going to be a little bit, it's block-ish. So um, we'll put together the map, but they're already uh, coming up with team names and people are pretty excited. And we actually had a company call and possibly want to sponsor it. So what is it? What is it? Sorry. Neighborhood light fight. So it's for uh, the residents trying to get them to get their neighbors together and trick out their outdoor holiday decor. Um, mm -hmm. But we've gotten a lot of inquiries since Sunday. I got my first official team in about three hours ago, but uh, the deadline to sign up is November 23rd. So we'll be sharing it out uh, more, but we uh, launched it on uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we're excited over December 1st through the 13th. And we'll reach Wonderful. out to the neighborhood associations and give them a heads up. I think um, Nick has all that contact information. So we'll uh, uh, we'll do that. I, it's a, it channel my inner Clark Griswold. And uh, uh, why isn't it lighting up? No, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I digress. Uh, I can uh, Eric. I'm sorry, go home. Uh, Eric first and then Christy. Yeah, um, so I am proud to say that uh, I am. I did my first supporting of a downtown business. Uh, my, my birthday was like two days after our last meeting and my wife got me an autographed uh, authentic Mario Lemieux jersey. So I went to the Framers Workshop and got that thing uh, framed up and, uh, you know, a bunch of Amex points later, uh, it'll be ready right before Thanksgiving, but it just felt awesome to, uh, you know, invest in uh, one of our businesses right downtown and, um, you know, they do phenomenal work. So, you know, at the next meeting, uh, I'll be happy to show that bad boy off. Excellent. Excellent. Well played. Nicely done. Uh, Madam Director. Uh, so something actually funny, uh, Tanya, when you mentioned it, um, a lot of people have asked us about caroling in the city. That's where we, you know, close down Main Street and bring the big mm -hmm. party. So obviously, probably not the best call this year. So we've decided to step away from that. But um, we're putting together something here internally that um, for that evening, because we know that's been a great evening for a lot of the businesses to be open. It's mm -hmm. um, this year it would have been on Sunday, December 13th, I believe. Hold on, look at my calendar. Yes, the 13th. Um, so we're talking about putting together an event that's called the Santa Stroll that um, we would ask businesses to let us know if they're willing to stay open that night um, and just promote the heck out of it. We'd stay open here. And we're actually going to have some holiday hours here for people to get their love local stuff. But look for that email, Tanya, probably this week. Um, about okay. the Santa Stroll. So again, it's nothing that merchants have to pay for. It's just us, another promotional thing. But I know a lot of people like those Sunday events uh to mm -hmm. send the opportunities to shop because it's a little quieter so yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here here fun oh, I, I, to I, tell you? I actually do have a question so the platform's going away this is uh from the restaurant perspective sure we were to want to do a snow globe or a um those igloo. igloo yeah do, do restaurants have to get permission to do that that's a Nick question. You so you can't put them in the street, um, but if you want them on your property, I think I would just call Nick because it would probably take away parking spaces. So you just have to confirm if that's an issue. So I, I would just check with Nick for sure. Uh, I'd already talked with my neighbors. I love my business neighbors, and we were talking about doing it in between the two houses, so it would just block like that little sidewalk there. Yeah. But I, I would just double check with Nick. He's he's the keeper yeah. of these types of things. Okay. Yeah, I, I think session. yeah yeah I think on balance, uh, Tanya, the city is really trying to do as much as we possibly can to help out, and um, as long as it's not a safety uh, health and safety issue, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think that where um, you'll find uh, Nick especially to be um, uh, very supportive and helping out. And, and to the extent that we can go to bat for any business that's looking for assistance with the city, um, happy to do it. But, you know, as you see, the mayor's on here um, mm-hmm. as, you know, and we've got, you know, we work, we're, we're partners in every sense of the word. So um, mm-hmm. we'll make sure that we can do got, everything. Thanks we can. to talk to on that. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Thanks. All right, good deal. Anybody else? All right, since we weren't going to see each other, uh, I think, until after Thanksgiving, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, a socially distance okay. responsible Thanksgiving. Uh, mask mask your turkeys up and uh, keep your heads <laughs> down and uh, keep your wits about you. And uh, everybody take care, and we will see each other uh, in uh, this time uh, next month. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for the warm Bye. welcome. You betcha. Good night. Good to see you. Bye now.